Hi, welcome uh, friends to Ghosh Company. Uh, this is another session, but today it's actually an interview. Uh, you know, I hear from a lot of friends, they talk about interview, they look forward to interviews at Ghosh Company. You have seen a teacher, you have seen a blogger, but today we have a guest from a slightly different field. It's the field of Indian classical dance, Kathak. I would like to welcome a very young guest today, Anita Pandey, who also hails from the same city where I live in. It's Montreal, Canada. And Anita, at a very tender age, from the very tender age, actually, she is learning Kathak. She has been trained by uh, Srimati Urmila Sharma, who is actually a disciple of uh, Pandit Brijju Maharajji, as well as uh, Anita has still learning uh, Shastriya Sangeet. And she has, she is learning, she teaches, and she does a lot of other things. She also studies at the McGill University. Uh, she will say more about it. So welcome, Anita. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for coming to Ghosh Company for a virtual chat in the, in the new normal world, I would say. So uh, tell us a bit about the dance form, Kathak, uh, a bit about the history and how you got interested in this dance form from a very tender age. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for the wonderful intro also. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Kathak, for those who might not know who are watching, um, I think what's often said about Kathak is it's one of the classical dance forms of India, and uh, it's from the north part of India, actually originated where my family is from, right. um, in the Allahabad uh, area. And um, so Kathak generally it's characterized by its fast uh, chakras or uh, pirouettes and the intricate footwork and the hyper speed of the dance. But um, I think that's generally what is said about it. What I would like right. to say on my part is that um, what makes Kathak unique for me is that it embodies the uh, Tandal and Vasya how equally so the masculine and feminine Right. is embodied uh, equally in the form and um, for example the feet are very strong but then mm -hmm. you have that delicacy and softness in the wrist um, also the three components of kathak like we have the uh, nritta nritya and natya mm -hmm. so the nritta is the technical or abstract meaningless mm -hmm. movement in uh, kathak and natya you have the abhinaya the expressional component right. and nritya Yes, which is a melding of uh, both. So in this way, I think that for me, at least, Kathak is a very complete dance form in itself. Mm -hmm. um, as for my journey in Kathak, uh, I wanted to dance Kathak since I was four. Okay. Um, my parents were showing us the uh, Mahabharata, uh, mm -hmm. Pierre Chopra's Mahabharata. Oh, yes. And then I remember Yes, <laughs> and I remember seeing uh, the Apsaras and Urvashi and mm -hmm. they were doing, actually Gopi Krishna mm -hmm. choreographed Mahabharata, he was in right. Mahabharata's Chitrasen also. So I remember seeing the Apsaras and uh, Krishna Bhagavan dancing and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it just, um, Maybe it sounds too, uh, you know, mystic, but honestly, it just awakened something in me that I felt almost like it was already there. I just beyond loved it and I could never get it out of my uh, head. So I kept pestering my parents that I have to learn uh, classical dance, I have to learn Kathak, and um, not only through the Mahabharata, but as I grew older, uh, you know, in films like uh, Pakiza and Umrao Jan, which, uh, you know, the, the Mujra or whatnot that they yes. show there. So, yes, yeah, so I was always, um, always inclined and always passionate about learning, but my family moved to the uh, subarctic region mm -hmm. of Manitoba. So oh, I didn't yes. have any, any scope to learn Kathak. Um, but my vocal training continued. I've been learning since I was eight years old, classical uh, voice. But um, Kathak, I started when I was 19, actually. Okay. And um, it's considered relatively late for in our field. Mm. But I personally don't believe, and neither did my guru, you know, that anyone is, it's never too late if you have that passion and uh, 
knack and hard work for it. Right. right. So, um, yeah, so I started when I was 19 under uh, Srimati Usha Sharma in uh, Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was absolutely lovely. And I remember learning Natkar from her very, very basic, you know, things. And then I moved to Montreal for McGill. Mm -hmm. So when yeah, I wasn't able to train under her anymore and uh, I learned a little bit uh, about a year and a half, almost two years from uh, Sudesh Namal Lake here in right. Montreal. And um, I was searching for, uh, I just, I didn't feel that, I was searching for something more. Um, mm -hmm. And when I actually went to India for vocal training mm -hmm. and um i don't know if i have time to you know expand on that but by um, please do yeah by pardon uh, please do please do okay um it's, well i mean uh, i'll try to make it as short as possible but really i went to india for vocal mainly because i was already learning in montreal so i thought you know pika you know i'm going for singing which isn't available here but um uh, I sat in the class and mm -hmm. my teacher here had said that uh, mm -hmm. but bas but India mein koi nahi de da hai class mein. Right. <laughs> it's like you you khadi ho jao, tatkar shuru karo, tatkar nahi aata. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. So I started uh, dancing and um, uh, one important thing actually is that uh, I had only met Urmila ma'am uh, once when we went to the office and I was just, you know, in group class. So I gave my monthly fees. But in right. that one meeting, she said something very important that I still remember today. She said, um, because we talked a little bit about the guru and I guess later in the interview, you know, right. maybe we might get to that yeah. in more depth. But uh, she said something that was very unique that often you don't hear from teachers. She said mm. that, Beta, um, Guru ko hamesha manna chahiye. You should always give the respect to the Guru. Mm -hmm. And of course, when we do Riyaz, then our Guru is in our mind that uh, he or she said, Aise karne ke liye, aise karne ke liye. But uh, always be your own dancer. Right. Keep the Guru in your mind, but you must, don't just blindly follow or imitate your guru you have to be your own person and your own dancer and um this i this i felt was very very different so anyway i started the class and um the senior students used to take the class then one day when ma'am came in the classroom and uh it one hour had passed so she mm -hmm. asked me that uh, or you want to join the second hour and mm -hmm. you're tired, you know, I'd come from Videsh and right. <laughs> she said it's not. It was like plus 50. So um, she said, I said, no, no, I'll, I'll stay for the second hour. So then she said, Isko kaha jata hai mehnat. she's telling the whole class. <laughs> So um, that's how I started. And then when the class was over, she said that, um, mm -hmm. So I showed her, um, I showed her one tukra and uh, she didn't say anything. She just, uh, she said that, uh, thoda, you know, soft, soft, it should be more sharp. Uh, that's all she said. She didn't okay. say anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> she just said that come the next morning. So, um, so I did, and uh, it, she started taking private class. And uh, I guess she saw that I wanted this. I was hardworking, but maybe mm -hmm. I didn't have the right direction. So from then on, I started taking private class with her and. She's the one who has, you know, really shaped me. Which is actually fascinating the way you mentioned uh, and it's a very typical uh, Guru Shishya Parampara. It sounds like a cinema to some extent, the way you have explained your first few moments uh, to actually, you know, uh, in Hindi we say that Guru Ka Milna is like Bhagwan Ka Milna. 
and i should tell our friends that uh, anita is very fluent uh, she she can speak hindi although we are doing it in english and she hails actually from a city uh, city of allahabad uh, anita hails from a city of allahabad which is uh, which has actually given rise to many poetry many poets many authors uh, many musicians and many dancers i mean allahabad is like in a big way it's one of the cultural hub and i think you will come to uh, we will talk about uh, the prayagraj uh, as we proceed uh, with the interview so now we are in canada now we are in montreal which is uh, half of the year it's cold half of the year it's super hot how like and you are studying your bachelor's at mcgill you are a bachelor you are studying your bachelor's in psychology so how do you balance i know that there is immense pressure of semesters and curriculum and with that you are learning and i i was reading about you doing some research about you i know that also in the normal times you also travel to india you are learning by yourself you are also distributing your experiences as a teacher you are also teaching you are having students and you are going to mcgill how do you do the time management i think that that's a that's a good example people would love to hear about like how do you do this multitasking um yeah it's it's busy it's busy it's not easy um maybe i wouldn't recommend it for everyone but uh, i i mean i cut into my sleep i have i'll be honest i cut into my sleep i don't get you know time to i don't have a social life mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't have time to you know really uh, sit or take a day off because there's always something because um i'm applying to my master so you know right. there's it's competitive there's pressure to get you know not just get by but to get an a mm -hmm. in the course and at the same time you know maintain your riyas and everything so what i do usually is or not usually every day i get up um and i dance for one and a half to two hours every morning right. and then i go to my um university class and then i come home and you know i have the rest of the day to do all the other all the other things that i need to do but one thing i would say if there's anyone else who would like to or is struggling with time management is definitely do it um <coughs> sorry definitely do it first thing in the morning okay because um otherwise we think that uh you know we become tired by the end of the day we think okay That's i'll do it after this i'll do it after this and then when the time comes and riyas takes so much energy that um when the time comes in the evening you don't have you don't have the energy to do it and usually it maybe you won't do it because ek ke baad ek something keeps coming up in the day and then okay if i'll do my homework then i'll do riyas or i'll 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 cook and then i'll do riyas then riyas ka bhi nahi hoga so i would say get up and do your riyas and then you can take it and also i also i think as we say in many other crafts that you know in the morning the mind is free uh, you know you you are more flexible you don't start your day there is no you know there is no latent irritation in your mind so at the very start of the day do your practice aur uske baad throughout the day you don't have to think about ki kuch reh gaya hai and you have still done your practice you don't feel bad about it ki riyas like you have not done your riyas that is actually fascinating and i think we should all learn and i think it's a lot of uh, i would say you have to be very very focused in order to keep the practice going i think practice is one of the very critical part of any any art any classical form particularly kathak without practice it shows up perhaps i think you can tell a bit about uh, if you don't practice what happens exactly exactly in the morning wo bhari pan nahi rehta hai you're correct that irritation and you know in the mind so of course like it's a movement and you do and there are techniques through which you do this movement you achieve the different steps you perform the uh, different forms of the dance but as you are dancing if you really look into your life uh, as we know about other dance forms too uh, do you think that kathak has uh, healed you in certain way in terms of uh, physical fitness in terms of mental fitness certainly it does if you can tell a bit about how uh, you have felt the changes in your life in terms of kathak so um definitely um for me not only inwardly or not only outwardly but inwardly it has healed me um 
I think something I keep saying every time I'm able to speak about Gathak is that Gathak has the power to transform uh, people. Right. And um, I, since I have a bit more time, this time I'll expand on that more. Um, for me personally, I really see myself as almost two different people, like mm -hmm. pre Kathak and then post Kathak. Right. I see myself as two different people. And um, maybe I shouldn't say different, maybe I should say I have two versions of myself and this mm -hmm. is my the better version of myself. Right. So, um, so when I mean when I speak about how I was before, you almost can't even picture me like this, the way that I look now or the way that I speak now. I was mm -hmm. very, very um uh see when I was little, I always saw a classical dancer, as I think many girls do, whether it's a ballerina or whether right. it's an Indian classical dancer, as the epitome of uh beauty and you know grace and poise so um an elegance mm -hmm. so i was no exception i thought the same the same thing but i never felt that um this is something that is achievable for me at when i was very young perhaps but then around you know nine ten and onwards i i felt that even though i wanted to do it i thought that maybe i can i can never get there because uh, uh in brief, the environment at home was um, tough. I leave it, leave it at that. It was tough, and um, you know, I was always, uh, I always felt very closed and right. put down in every environment, and in school also. In school, I was just known as uh, the smart kid. I was, I was always the topper in the class, and my uh, my mom, she made sure of that. So excited that um oh my god you know can i be a, a dancer am i you know i've started on this path and i was so excited to be that you know image that i think we all we all see when we think of a or we all think of when we see a, a dancer mm -hmm. um so uh yeah after i started uh dancing it definitely it completely transformed me, but not immediately. Really right. what happened is uh, when I started with my my guru, Urmila mm -hmm. Sharmaji, then that is when, when I started learning properly and I started doing proper uh, riyas and I learned the proper postures and movements and whatnot. That is when... Um, Physically, I know you asked uh, inwardly and outwardly, you asked right. about both. So physically, physically, um, just by the sheer uh, effort, it is so, so, so strenuous. You know, it's like someone dumped a bucket of water on mm -hmm. you after you're done practicing. So just by the sheer sweat and energy, my body weight half of weight it's uh, really about health I became a lot uh, healthier I didn't feel so sluggish you know mm -hmm. I felt more feel more strong so um, physically there's that aspect and you know in dance it doesn't shape you physically only uh, your body it shapes also your face because in Kathak we have a certain andaz in the right. Mustan Kaseona how you see that look in the in the eyes and um, it really sculpts your whole your face the bow that comes out of your eyes out of your smile mm -hmm. it's so physically it completely changes you and then right. inwardly um, inwardly for me um, as I said my family environment was quite uh, you know uh, rough. So when I moved to Montreal, then um, I was very vulnerable, and um, I I went through a, a heartbreak, and it was you know many long years of mm -hmm. uh, toxic kind of um, not a just a, not a nice situation to be in for for myself personally. So um, when while when that actually happened and. Mm. Um, it hit me or I really got seriously hurt emotionally, you know, in, in that way for the first time, then uh, it kind of 
forced me or that heart forced me to realize that I have to draw satisfaction from within. Uh, Self-satisfaction does not come from external sources. And this is, this is maybe a harsh reality, but it's very true. And um, you have, it's great to have a support system if you do, and you should, you should have great friends who are a great support system. But That's right. even if and yes, I, you know, even if someone wants to be there for you and they have the best of intention, they can't always be there for you, whether it's they, their help with their own work or there's been some argument. So you will need to, and even if someone, wait, some some you know, they can become blue in the face, but right. until you are able to have strength inside, yeah, no, no one can, um, can uh, help you. So I realized at a young age that, um, no, this, I need to find something within. There needs to be this reservoir within. And for me, that was, is, and I know will always will be uh, Kathak for me. It gives me that, um, actually by dancing and dancing and as I was gaining that inner strength because of Kathak, I finally had enough strength to cut the relationship and end it. And um, I was, I wasn't uh, sitting, you know, and crying because I had, um, at that point I had, I had my dance and that's my greatest companion. I think very wisely said, and I think it's an example everyone should be able to catch that example that like, as I'm just uh, spelling it out to the audience that as Anita mentioned that Kathak saved her from a lot of emotional, uh, you know, troublesome things uh, from her heartbreak. So I think what the point she's trying to make is we have to first look for the change within ourselves. We can go to a counselor, we can go to a doctor, we can meet the best of friends, but unless we change ourselves, and if the, unless that happens from within, the real change will not happen or it will never happen and we will continue uh, to be in the darker zone. And I think it's, it's great that Anita has done that. And uh, I would say that at a very, it's great that you have achieved that. And at a very tender age, uh, I was uh, seeing that you have performed at, uh, at a national level. You have performed at the international uh, podium. You have been featured uh, on the CBC. So with these kind of things at a tender age, when coming back to the guru shishi relationship or, or the master or the teacher-student relationship, how do you see that? Because I know that in the classical dance forms or in any classical form in the traditional days, you know, what is the right time when the teacher should tell, uh, you know, their student that, you know, this is the time you can go out and perform. Did you, did you get that kind of an encouragement from your teacher or that kind of a freedom that, yes, Anita, go and perform? And do you also give that level of freedom and encouragement to your students whom you teach? It's a very good question. Um, not from all my teachers, from uh, my current, my, my guru, uh, mm -hmm. Nila Sharma ma'am. Yes, definitely. She was, um, she's the one who actually pushed me to teach. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always wanted to teach. That was my dream for sure. But I thought that um, I won't start now. I thought, you know, maybe in a few years or down the line, I'll start teaching. But um, she said that now your movements, everything, you you have a command on on the movements. You know that what you're doing and you're at a stage where I definitely think that you should you should teach her bachonko tayar karo, she said. And I said, oh, well, okay. You know what I was thinking? Really? Can I do this? You know, and I... Um, and then when I went back in December to her, she's like, so did you do anything? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, <laughs> maybe I should. She's really serious about this. Um, so then I felt like, yes, yeah, she really believes in me. And she, she wasn't just, you know, saying in passing. And she said, that this is why, you know, this is my purpose that I give, I give this gyan, this mm. knowledge to my students and a student who, is serious about that is able to you know embody that then i want i want you to do something with that and that will make that will make me so happy and fulfilled um so then i started uh, i started teaching with her uh, blessings and um, every time i perform you know she's the first person to you know like my video on facebook and and comment and uh, she will never say no or you can't do it. You know, even if there's a competition like the um, 
Sangeet Natak Academy mm-hmm. competition mm-hmm. that I did and ended up placing first because of her and her efforts. You know, she, it was like three days away and she right. we had to perform in three different thals and um, I wasn't comfortable in a thal other than me, which is fine because, you know, even if you know one thal, but you know it thoroughly, that's, that's what matters. But for this competition specifically, they were going to ask a different thal. So she's like, no, 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 we can do it. And in two, three days, she gave me two cries in other thals and she, she made me ready for the competition. So she never says, no, 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 she makes it happen. I think that's, that's something phenomenal. I think that's the mode of teaching every teacher or every guru should adopt. Uh, uh, I, would, I would say uh, not just in Kathak, I, I think in any form, uh, you know, that hierarchy thing, it should, ex- it should exist from the point of experience. But at the same time, the student also should be given freedom because without giving freedom personally, I feel that we can never judge the student how the student will actually perform. And I'm very happy to hear that uh, you're sharing your experiences of freedom and encouragement. And that actually led you to where you are today. And I I think you have a long, long way to go uh, and more more things to explore. So uh, I'm sure that whatever you have learned, you actually distribute a part of that knowledge and you preach the same philosophy with your students. Coming back to it, I know that you you take classes. You have been to uh, classes in India or workshops. You are teaching here in Canada. Uh, I think we would all agree that the, the population of student or the amount of diversity that you see in the students is very different when you're teaching an Indian classical dance form like Kathak in Canada. So, and also the level of competition. So coming back to that point, how do you see, I mean, the level of, com- because in Canada, how many Kathak schools are there? Or how many, what is the number of students if I just sum up North America versus India? Or, or I would say any South Asian countries per se. So when you come to that level of competition and encouragement, how do you tell your students, what's your main uh, way to motivate them uh, to face the real world of performance? Um, well, for my students, I apply the same philosophy that my guru did. I'm always encouraging my students. And um, I think one point that my guru said is if you don't have any um, student, good student to show, then you can't say that you're a good teacher. So, um, and you know, it's your students who they take your name ahead also by performing, they take your name and um, that it's not that you're um, in jeopardy from that. I think, you know, what you mentioned, the difference between India and Canada, and you mentioned competition, which is an excellent point because um, in India see when we in the ancient times or even uh, maybe 50 years ago mm-hmm. the Guru Shishya Parampara in its purity what it actually is is was very beautiful a very beautiful thing and um, it was different then because um, people used to live with their guru and they used to you know wash dishes for them and cook for them and yes. all the used to sit in that environment so they had all day to you know learn and pick things up but here and especially in the west even in india um sometimes there are daily classes but here in the west you know students are a lot of the time we have adult students also Mm -hmm. who have Mm -hmm. their work responsibilities they have you know a lot of responsibility on their shoulder apart from dance so they're coming you know one hour a week is their class and um, unfortunately I think um, the Guru Shishya Parampara um, you know I think there's a tendency especially because in the classical community to not speak about you know anything that might taint the system of you know right. our form or what goes on but I don't think that um, this is good I think if we want to progress you know, some people will right. come and tell me that I agree with you, you know, but you need, you need to speak, uh, otherwise it won't change. And so many people are being really um, repressed by the uh, manipulation of this system. Because here people um, the Guru Shishya Parampara, they manipulate to their own advantage, unfortunately. And um, there's no one here 
and uh, some people were have never been to India who are learning. So they say, oh, India me aisa hota, India me vesa hota. No, no, in India they don't uh, they don't teach like this. You just copy the guru, right. or um, you know all kinds of uh, nonsense <laughs> really that is uh, said. And um, because of the lack of competition, as you mentioned. Um, people, the dancers become very content here. Mm -hmm. There's this contentment and monopoly. Mm -hmm. So they think, okay, there's no, there's no uh, competition. So you know, I'm the best. And they, and they have this attitude with their student. They focus less on the student and more on hami sab kuch hai. I am everything, mm -hmm. you know. So um, and the monopoly is that uh, because there is no competition, or no, I shouldn't say no competition, but far less than in India. Far less, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, you know, they they want to ensure that. They don't want that, oh, if I teach this student well, then tomorrow they'll become my competition. Because is if you have different rules in life and you're, it's your responsibility as a teacher to teach and at the end of the day, students are giving their time and money, so, you know, you have to respect that. So I think that this contentment and this monopoly is something, unfortunately, that happens in the West. Uh, not that it doesn't happen in India, but it, it happens far more here. I think that's a phenomenal thing you have mentioned. And what actually, what is fascinating that you have realized some of the very intricate philosophy of a, a good guru shishya relationship at a very tender age. And you are going with that with an open mind and you are uh, giving it to the future generations to come. And uh, above and all, you are also introducing a form of dance. Uh, and in a way, it's like spreading word about a dance form that actually did not originate in this country, that did not start in Canada, but it's an addition. And you are one of the, one of the proponents of this form uh, in addition to many and introducing a dance form to people who are probably not aware of it. And certainly uh, there is a demand and I would guess that it's not uh, restricted to one class or one ethnicity. It's a dance form that people are appreciating. And you mentioned something, uh, and I think a lot of people in a very late term, when nowadays they, they get, uh, I have seen a lot of young Kathak dancers or in, who are specializing in some sort of uh, Indian classical dance, particularly Indian classical dance, they have a tendency or they get attracted. And one of the source of attraction is actually Bollywood, which you kind of mentioned. There are films that even people who probably are not aware of the techniques of the dance, but they know immediately when we talk about Kathak, the names that comes to your mind is Mughal Azam, uh, Pakiza. And there are many, many, Bollywood has utilized this dance form and many other forms. And now they are doing fusion. And a lot of people actually go by that kind of a gimmick that, you know, I want to master that maybe to have an entry at Bollywood or, you know, that larger than life aspect of dance, which is probably not true in reality because you have to learn a lot. And there is a, of course, Kathak is not meant for movies. It has its own charm and its own discipline. And it's a lot of hard work that you have to put in. So what's your take on that kind of a thing? Like, do you think now uh, in the world, people are going back to this uh, traditional dance forms and they are modernizing it, uh, they are use, utilizing it in cinema. Do you think that actually gives a wrong picture to the audience that probably the dance form has been messed up or it's, it's okay? Um, what I think about that is really uh, the films never present Kathak in its should uh, form. Yes. So uh, my personal take on that is that it really, and Bollywood really propagates a wrong image of Kathak. And um, I usually they do this with Kathak only <laughs> because Kathak, I think it's a form that you can mold it in that way. And um, what's the s most sad thing I feel is when um, I don't un really, I don't understand that why there's so many amazing Kathak dancers uh, who are, and so beautiful. Other Kathak, why don't you call a Kathak dancer? I, it boggles my mind. If 
um, you know, if it's okay, fine. If the actress has to play the role, um, right. I don't know, you know, but the actress isn't trained. But anyway, you know, if they, if you want to do that, fine. But um, I think that the film uh, medium is so powerful that they should use their power, uh, especially nowadays, before it was much better. Right. Uh, to show Kathak and expose Kathak because, you know, Kathak in its uh, should form is far more exciting and powerful than uh, Kathak Bollywood, you know, uh, fusion. Uh, but usme mehnat, mehnat bohat lagta hai. So if, uh, if you are able or you have that stamina to put that effort in Kathak and do it properly, then if you are like your tal and your force and your chakras and you've worked so hard that you can actually present uh, Kathak the way it should be, then there's no need to um, fuse it with Bollywood and you have something that, that's much uh, uh, superior to that. But, um, you know, actually one example I'll use is that there was a semi-classical uh, album that was released. So it wasn't actually attached to a film, but uh, okay. Shreya Ghoshal and everyone were singing. Right. It's a very mainstream album. So they had Pandit Birju Maharajji um, doing the bowl, the Padhant, uh, the recitation. And it was Maharajji's Tumri actually that was being sung in the album. But for the video, they got um, someone to do it who had almost next to none, no training in, in Kathak and they made it very uh, filmy. So this to me, I felt, okay, now there's no attachment to a story now. Now you don't have the excuse that, um, oh, I need the main actress to do this. So now why didn't you call uh, a proper... You Someone know, who is an expert or who has learned the craft. Yeah. I understand so what you mean, yeah. This to me needs should be, uh, is not right. I hope the world, I hope the world changes for any other craft and any craft should be utilized properly so that we don't convey the wrong message that, you know, something is more difficult than what it is or something is more easy because of the glamour. So as we are coming uh, towards the end of the chat and I would just uh, uh, like, I, I would like to state this uh, to our friends that as we have done this chat and as we have recorded it over the Zoom platform at some places, uh, because it's live, you might have uh, found that some of the areas are, glitchy because of uh, you know it's it works on the internet thing so uh, we would like to apologize on that behalf but uh, otherwise it's a fascinating chat that we are having uh, coming towards the walking towards the end in this chat i would like to ask uh, anita particularly that uh, do you have any like before we end this do you have any words for the future kathak aspirants in canada or all over the world uh, they should keep in mind or whoever people who are actually performing, who are taking the training, what are the things they should look for in order to progress in Kathak as a student of Kathak? I think um, the main thing in terms of progression as the students, and I think the main thing is that you should always remember that your first allegiance and loyalty is to the dance form. It's to Kathak itself. Always be... Um, always be loyal to the form. And by that, I mean, it's very easy to get involved in politics. And unfortunately in our dance world, as in every world, there is a lot of uh, controlling and a lot of politics. So stay away from that. Be true to your form, be true to your riyas, let your riyas speak for itself. And um, I think the most important thing is that we all have a responsibility to preserve this form, which has been preserved for so long. So be honest, be hardworking, and um, you know, uh, the only way that the form can stay alive, we need a, a body, we need a human being. <laughs> so unless you keep uh, make students ready and preserve those movements, and you know, uh, you have if you're showing one movement you have to say what are all the intricacies of that movement. Otherwise, once you're gone, who will, who will know? No one will have that knowledge. That's right. As karte karte will be gone. And that will, form, the, yeah. that will be the most tragic day in the world because our, our uh, people before us have worked so hard through oppression, through the, you know, rule and, uh, you know, colonialism and whatnot to 
maintain this form and it would be a shame if we're the ones or the people after us to you know drop this and um so teaching is what i would say is one of if not the most important thing and i think lastly what i'd like to say is your relationship with your guru is one of the most important relationships in your life so it's very important that you find and you have every right to find the correct guru for you because um you know a relationships or romantic relationships will come and go but that guru you know maybe while there while you're being hurt by someone in a romantic relationship or in your family or your friends it's that guru who is still going to be there she or he will always be your guru and they will always be there to guide you and um for me at least that's uh that's my profession i want to make my life from that so uh the guru shishya relationship is very important and should always be handled properly and uh i'd like just good luck to everyone uh, my students everyone's students and um just spread the love for this form thank you so much anita and i would like to uh, again uh, tell all the viewers that uh, hopefully you have enjoyed uh, most of our conversation today and uh, got enlightened i certainly did and uh, as anita mentioned that keep your focus uh, do your practice do your riyas and uh, keep up the hard work stay away from the negativity and this is in general this is also true for kathak and one of the purpose of uh, our youtube channel ghosh company is we try to we try to uh, in a way preserve the art forms we don't want things to get lost and the way it's very nicely what anita mentioned that we also don't want kathak to get lost and she is one of the perpetuators who is here today talking about maintaining this dance form and along with several thousand people all along the world and i think it it is our responsibility because there are many many generations of work that has uh, that's there and we don't want uh, any dance form or any art form particularly coming to an art form to become extinct we don't want that and certainly not for kathak or any other form and that's the whole purpose we have to be responsible to keep that going and uh, thank you so much for your time and again to your audience if you want to know more about anita she has a page her details she teaches in montreal all the details will be actually presented in the description box of this video you can have a look at it feel free to communicate with anita she will be very she's a very nice person she'll be very happy to do so and uh, as she has said keep up the good work keep up the hard work uh, if i say this in hindi ki what anita said ki bina mehnat ke aapko zindagi mein aap kuch bhi nahi pa sakte hain to mehnat karte rahiye mehnat kijiye kyunki mehnat ka phal bahut meetha hota hai thank you for joining us anita and you have a, a lovely day and all the best for your future work with kathak and namaste thank you so much namaste